I didn't think I could be an engineer. Um, I never did anything robotics or mathletes or anything like that. The nerdiest thing about me was the Rubik's Cube. What if I forget everything? <laughs> <laughs> when I feel really sad or I have a problem I don't understand, I will sit down with the Rubik's Cube and just solve it over and over again. And I can kind of feel like my brain is solving the, the problem at the same time. It's kind of my safety blanket. I have had a lot of struggles in my career as an aerospace engineer. Every day, feeling like I haven't learned enough to speak my mind. Rubik's Cubes have helped me learn to trust my voice when I hear something inside. And when I finally did get into an engineering school, it was almost like I had a little bit of a, of a confidence that I, that I could you know, do a Rubik's Cube. And, and that gave me the confidence and the edge to be able to do STEM. I did spend two weeks living in a simulated moon base when I started trying to become an astronaut, and that was really, really hard to do. Look at that. Wow. Because you're kind of under a microscope and all of your emotions are kind of out on the table. And one of the things that really helped me through it was having my cube and being able to just kind of work through everything in a safe little cube. To learn how to solve the Rubik's Cube in zero gravity, that's gonna, you know, put me on the path to space. What I want to do on my journey is, is become an astronaut, hopefully solving a Rubik's Cube in space as an astronaut, and this is the next step. Hi everyone, my name is Bailey Burns. Um, I'm an aerospace engineer. Um, I'm actually here with Rubik's, so I'll be solving Rubik's Cubes in zero-g. Um, hopefully, <laughs> if I remember how to do everything properly. Hi everyone, um, it's happening. I was very calm about this whole experience up until about an hour ago. I had um, some stress dreams that I was solving the cube and the little cubes kept popping off. Um. <laughs> I saw the flight suit, I saw the patch, and it suddenly became real. I'm here, I have my zero G flight suit, my Rubik's patch. After two years, I can't believe I'm finally doing this. I am about to go solve Rubik's cubes in zero G. Oh! Guys, there's a plane! Tomorrow, about five minutes before it's go time, I'm gonna reach this very calm state. I'm actually excited and calm right now. I've been so nervous all day, and now it's just like, yep, I'm gonna go do this. Bye, guys! <laughs> yeah! Yeah! We're doing it! I, I would have not predicted that this was part of my path at all. I'm here! I'm doing it! I'm here! It kind of comes with that imposter syndrome thing. I felt like someone was gonna walk in and be like, you just got punks, like. Bailey's amazing. My mentor, Cyan Proctor, she's gone to space, so she knows how to do zero G. She lived in it for three days. This yeah. is my amazing mentor. She's gonna teach me everything I need to know about being in zero G. You got this. I, I got wait. this. The universe really does like put the coolest experiences together. You just have to say yes to the experiences and the rest become clear after that. Are you ready? I'm ready. So there's this thing called a G-force here on Earth. We feel one G, this is one pound, so it feels like one pound. When you're experiencing two Gs, this one pound cube suddenly feels like two pounds. So a parabolic flight, if you guys don't know, it's a plane that flies in a parabola. The upslope, it feels like two Gs. At the downslope, zero Gs. And that's what they fill up in space. That's the astronauts floating around up there. You only get about 20 seconds in zero gravity, so I have to learn how to solve a Rubik's Cube in 20 seconds. Good afternoon, Woo, baby. I'm very excited. I'm very nervous. Have you ever done this before? I'm scared. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Usually I can be nervous, and then when it's time to do the mission, I can do the mission. It's happening. Say hi, everyone. <laughs> in the spirit of trusting myself, I'm going to be able to just put everything away and do what I need to do. Hello. Hi. Hello, world. <laughs> oh, we're up. Yep. We're definitely up now. There's no going back now. I'm, I'm buckled in. Go, so hard. Keep hard. Woo! I guess we'll just see how this all plays out.
That was a brand new experience. <laughs> Zero G is my happy place. I want to live in zero G. I felt free. I also felt like my limbs were not my own. What was it like solving a Rubik's Cube at 32,000 feet? Solving a Rubik's Cube at 32,000 feet was the hardest cube solve I've ever had in my entire life. One, two, thirty-three, and zero G. There was so many distractions. I could feel my body moving and like, so hard to focus. my hands were doing different things. My arms were raising while I was trying to focus on this cube. It was just too much going on. I had to focus on solving the cube. It was so hard. I didn't think I could do it. I solved a Rubik's Cube in zero G in 19 seconds. Oh my god! I did it! I'm so glad that I've been solving so many cubes to get to this point so that I was ready when all those other distractions came in. Oh my goodness, that was one of the most amazing experiences of my entire life. I'm still reeling. I'm going to need about four days to process everything that just happened. It feels so strange that I have been chasing this goal for so long, and now it's achieved. 19 seconds! 19 Woo! seconds! I have no idea what's next for me on my journey, but I know it's going to end in space. I do want to go to space, and I think this was a huge stepping stone on becoming an astronaut, because now I know what it is to be in zero G. I think the biggest reason I decided I wanted to solve the Rubik's Cube in zero-G, part of it is because I wanted to prove to myself I could. And I did, I can, I, I proved it, and that helps me on my way to becoming an astronaut. So that's all from me, uh, from your favorite space cuber. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.